greet you with the holy word of peace. Our lesson is going to come from Romans 8, verses 35 and 39. I have often admired the televangelists, the preachers who get up there and say, God's going to make you prosperous. You give a dollar, you get ten. You get ten, you get a hundred dollars. Whatever it is, God will multiply it tenfold, a hundredfold. Mm -hmm. My question is, what is prosperity? No. We prospered a long time ago when Jesus died on the cross. Amen. Every strike on his back mm. brought us prosperity. Every step that he took on his way to his crucifixion brought us prosperity. The thorns that were placed upon his head brought us prosperity. That prosperity was solidified when Jesus looked up to heaven and his father and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And was further solidified when he arose three days later and went back into the kingdom of heaven. We promise we pay our tithes. We come to church regularly. We do the things that the pastors tell us. We listen to them. We get excited to jump up and down. We have in this conference here, give it here for this price or that. You can come to our conference and be blessed by God. But what prosperity are you talking about? Amen. Uh, as Jesus has said when asked, do we pay taxes? He said, whose face is on this corner? It was Caesar's face. You give unto Caesar what is Caesar, and give unto God what is God. Whose face is on the dollar bill? Whose face is on the five dollar bill? Whose face is on the ten, the twenty, the fifty, the one hundred? The ones we use every day, we can tell you whose face is on it. The ones we probably never see again, like a million dollar bill, we can't tell you who's on this. Van Buren, Google. Why don't we remember these people? Well, let me ask you, have they ever come to you on a night when you were scared? Did they wake you up in the morning, start you on your way? Have any of these faces on any of these bills ever promised you everlasting life? Have any of these faces on any of these bills sacrificed themselves for you? You know why they've forgotten you? Because they've done nothing. Now, the one who has woke you up every morning, who's come to you when you felt bad, who's, who's celebrated you when you were joyful, who's with you every day and every hour, who picks you up when you fall, yes, he, does. He, picks, he heals you when you're sick, yes, he, he calms you when you're excited. And we can all remember who he is. It took one person to save us all. One person to bring the person to bring us the prosperity that none of those people or any of those bills could ever do for us. I have nothing against preaching prosperity, but I want you to preach the right prosperity. Amen. 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 My soul is prosperous. Amen. My life is prosperous. Amen. I'm blessed. Yes. Not just by the everyday getting up, walking around, but the blessings that God puts for me, before me to seek. Yes. As long as I seek those blessings, I'll be even more blessed. Yeah. Can't thank him enough. I can never find all those blessings because by the time I find that one, he's blessed me with ten more blessings. Amen. It is not in the blessings. It is in your seeking the face of God. Your greatest blessing will be that final reward when you get to see the face of God. When you get to make it through those pearly gates and walk into heaven. Them Benjamins and all the stuff that's down here, the money you leave your folks and wondering what they're going about it, that's none of your business. What they're doing with what you left behind is none of your business. Thank you, Jesus. Your business is with God. Your business right now is to be the best person that God 
made you it didn't go beyond that Amen. so that you can step through those pearly gates Amen. so that you can see the face of God and as our covenant says I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God which is in your reasonable service we have a problem with the word sacrifice mm -hmm. we think sacrifice always means death no it doesn't you need to sacrifice those friends who are still out there. You need to sacrifice those bad habits that were still out there. You're going to slide back, but God still loves you. Mm -hmm. You need to sacrifice doing the things you know are wrong when you know what to do right. Mm -hmm. Romans 8.35 8, says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, our greatest prosperity. Amen. I get tired of hearing people say, but Lord ain't gonna bless nobody like me. Hmm. Hmm. Open up your Bible. If you read anything, read verses 38 and 39 over and over again, and it tells you nothing can separate you from the love of God. Uh, amen. You can kick about it, you can doubt it, you can cry about it, you can curse God, you can do whatever you want to do, but he will still love you. Your acceptance of how you accept that love, how you act to God, is where your salvation lies. It don't lie in Reverend so and so tell you, give $100 and you give back a thousand. If that is what you're living for, you don't need God for that. That's a man manufactured thing anyway. We make an idols, and half the time we don't even know what those idols are or who those idols are. We just know that money can get you this, money can get you that. Money can't get you salvation. Money cannot get you blessing. Truthfully, money is not a blessing. Amen. You want to know these days and times, money is a curse. <laughs> the rich have a saying, the more money we make, the more problems we see. Now you got to worry about keeping that money. Now you got to worry about is someone trying to steal that money. Now you got to worry about how can I make more money. You're never satisfied with what you have. Amen. But the love of God, you, eternal love of God yep. is always satisfying. Mm -hmm. It never changes. Yep. His blessings never change. Mm -hmm. You got to catch up to those blessings. That should be your lifelong goal. God has blessed me. I need to find out what my blessings are. I need to go where my blessings are. Not to the club. Not out with the fellas. It's all right. Entertain yourself every morning by having some people come from any back. I know when we were growing up, weekend was ours. We're going out to party. We're going to have friends. Only good thing about my we party together as friends. We in somebody's house. We weren't right wild in the street. We did our thing. But as we got older, the time getting close to get out of high school, we all thought about what we were going to do with the and we started governing ourselves according to that. We didn't party that much no more. Well, some of them stayed out there. But you won't have it. Some people just don't get it. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And it still says, whosoever shall believe in him shall have everlasting life. Our salvation is through our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A man who was whipped, beat, talked about, spit on and everything, who got on the cross and said, Father, forgive them. Mm. They know not what they yes, do. When we bump into each other, the first thing out of my mouth is something you, your, your grandchild shouldn't hear. Mm. Some of us embarrassed by it and apologize, which is good, and you pray on it. Some of us, it just don't matter. You don't get the bump with me. It has nothing to do with business of bumping into you. We live in a crowded world. Every now and then, somebody going to bump into somebody. And I ask you how you feel. 
I generally want to know how you feel. It takes you five seconds or five minutes to tell me. A lot of people, how you feel? Oh, child, let me tell you. Oh, excuse me, this song, so I got to come. Jesus took time while he was dying to say, Father, forgive them, for, I, for they know not what they do. And you can't take a few minutes out to listen to somebody tell you how they feel. That's not God, right? And like I said before, as far as money goes, what color was Jesus' pinned right suit? What kind of shoes did he have on? Who styled his hair? How much money did he have in his pockets? Amen. And we worry about these things. Thank you. We worry about things of this earth that we cannot take with us. Things that when we leave here, that's going on, and like I said, it's none of our business. Our covenant is with God. Everybody, not just as a whole. Right? It says his covenant with God. The things he said he's going to do. The things God's doing for him. That's none of my business. My wife has covenant with God. My sister-in-law has covenant with God. Bam's got covenant with God for the things he needs, he knows, has to do. And the things he and God speak about. That's none of my business. I have no right to infringe upon me. I can't tell him how he's worshiping or what he says is right and wrong because I don't know what the conversation is between him and God. Amen. So basically, that's none of my business. My business is my business with God. My faults, my defects, my shortcomings, the things I promised, the things I said I'm going to do, the things God wants me to do, I may hesitate, and he gave me a reason why I need to do it. Why I do what I do and say God told me to do it, a lot of people have an opinion about it. But you know what? It's none of their business. It is more than my business is why the lady across the street and seem to be sitting and seem to be doing good. You living over here doing a little bit struggling. Well, what are you worried about? You got shelter, you got food, you got clothes, you're breathing. So you're doing fine. That person over here who you think is doing good ain't doing so well. Them dope dealers, they say, they ain't doing so well because they got to wash their back 24 hours a day. You supposed to be all united, gang and friends, we family, but you can't trust you can't trust the person standing next to you. Standing in front of you, standing behind you, or even thinking about you, because you don't be worried about what you're thinking about. But me, I'm gonna serve the Lord. I'm gonna serve the Lord according to his ways, according to his will. Now, what Brother Mike tells me about his conversation with the Lord. I tell him, my conversation with the Lord, we discuss it. We have our opinions. We talk to each other. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. See, understanding of how he and the Lord works, my understanding of how he and the Lord works. But the final decision between him and the Lord is none of my business. Nothing anybody else does in the name of Jesus or in the name of the Lord is your business because your only business is what you need to do. Amen. You can't save me and I can't save you. I can't tell you how to worship God. I can't tell you whether you're worshiping him right or wrong. But I do know, do know that we were given a great prosperity when Jesus died on the cross. And in knowledge too. So don't be scared of the word sacrifice. It does not always mean you have to die. It means you have to give up a little bit of that little sin. Eat a little bit at a time. Ain't nobody going cold turkey on giving up sin. We aren't made that way. Like the alcoholic just saying, I'm just not going to drink for the rest of the month. Which lasts about five minutes. Because while he's thinking about not drinking and how himself, he's taking a drink thinking about it. Done it so much, you don't even realize. Well, man has sin so much, sometimes they don't even realize he's sinning. Amen. Your intent to do good, sometimes get lost in your habits of doing bad. So you need to start recognizing. The only way you can recognize that is if you get within your spiritual self and talk to the Lord. There's nothing in this corporeal life you can do that's going to make you into good, get into the kingdom of heaven. Because everything that goes on here that's physical is none of your business. It's not for you to say. It's not for you to do. 
What you need to do is get in your spiritual self, seek God's help. Let him guide you to what you must do. What others say, it doesn't matter. It's none of their business. They might not like what you're doing. So, I don't have to please you. I have to please two people, me and God. If God's satisfied with me and I'm not, there's still something wrong. If I'm satisfied with me and God's not, there's something wrong. I'm trying to get that evenness where I'm all right with what I'm doing and I feel that God's all right with what I'm doing. Amen. Then I know I'm on the right path. He's not going to abandon me just because I'm doing wrong. Which is why I say your prosperity is in the knowledge that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Realize that. You can hate all you want. You can curse all you want. You can be a warmonger. You can be whatever it is. But God still loves you. The saying is, is God so loved the world. Not that God just loved Brother Midas. The heck with the rest of y'all. <laughs> he loves everybody. But what we tell each other, I love you and ain't a thing you can do about it. You truly mean that? No, that's not you. But I truly mean that. Ain't nothing you can do about it. You get mad at me, I'm still going to love you. Amen. You cuss me out, I'm still going to love you. Love. The more I love you, the mad, the mad you get, the more I'm going to love you. <laughs> Till you finally just break down to the crowd laugh and say, you're just going to love me anyway. Yes. That's the way God is. I'm going to love you regardless. As long as you live and breathing, the words out of your mouth say, God don't bless nobody like me. You lie. About lie. There's the ones who's teaching me prosperity. They're teaching me the wrong kind of prosperity. I'm not coming to church to put $10 in there so I can get 100 in my bank account. That ain't going to happen. I'm coming to church that $10 I give, that $10 I might just have that day. Amen. As long as I give my all. My prosperity is going to be in the 10, 20, 100 blessings that he gives me. Amen. That money's still going to be there. What do you do with that money? Guess what? It's none of my business. <laughs> How do you use that money? It's none of my business. My covenant is with God, and the only thing I can be concerned with is what me and God, how me and God doing today? Wake up each morning, okay, do what we're doing today. But when you talk about your blessings, other than the ones you know you're getting, you need to seek the ones that God has for you. They're not having a problem. They're there. But don't be too ornery to get up and look for them. Sacrifice. If it means that day you can't go play basketball with the boys, because I'm looking for a blessing, God. What's more important? All you're going to do is get sweaty. You might start a fight. Then you're going to miss the blessing for that day. You see God's blessing. By the time you find that blessing, you got 10 more you got to go look for. It's a game of love and seek. I love you. Seek my blessings. You can't stop me from loving you. You can't stop me from taking care of you. You can't stop me from making you breathe every day. Now I'm going to keep on you and keep on you and tell you how much I love you till you finally just bend like you did for the hey. devil didn't sin you, but you're going to bend for God and say, I give up, Lord. I give Too up. Much. What is it you want me to do? Yes, Lord. That's how we have to be with ourselves. That's how we have to be with those we love. That's how we have to be with our friends. There's going to be something that's going to keep on, but, you know, that's between them and God. That's none of my business. I'm doing God's business. Yes, Lord. I'm telling you, keep up with God's business between you and God. As long as you understand that this is between you and God, you do all right. But when you start going to tell the sister there how she should pray or how she should live or you just ain't doing right, you don't know what she's going through. You don't know what she's talking to with God. You don't know the answers God gave her. You don't know how God's blessed her. Whatever's going on between her and God is none of your business. I talked to the pastor the other day and he said, yeah, there was some things on my mind that since I've been down there, some things that, uh, you know, I just had to sit down and think about. And I wanted to ask him, what well, it came to mind to ask him, well, what are those things? 
and say some things to them. But the first thing came to my head when I said, I get that. Amen. Your pastor down there, be your pastor. If he's doing all right, that's all you need to know. What's going on between me and him? It's none of your business. I mean, I had something I wanted to say, but I had to go And I said, well, I guess I'll leave that alone. Amen. They normally put me together, we talk, we discuss, but this wasn't that kind of conversation. It's God saying, he's doing all right, he's doing all fair, he's talking to you. That's it. Whatever else, it's none of your business. It's not, I don't care how you feel about God. It says that I know you love God the same way I love God, but I can't go any further than that. I'm not having your conversation with God. <laughs> any more than you eating, your eating makes me feel full. No, it don't. It don't. Amen. Amen. But realize your covenant is not with those evangelists and preachers on TVs and telling you. This is how you get prosperity. Because other than monetarily, evidently, they don't know either. I mean, I like them. I like the way they talk. They sound good. All false prophets sound that way. And they say they're going to cut you out or come try to guide your life. But they're going to try to manipulate you and let you into their life. You will be prosperous, he says, up there in that suit when he came in his limousine. Probably flew in on his private jet. But that's not what you were supposed to preach. Jesus didn't have no private jet. Jesus didn't have, barely had shoes. He had the same clothes on. He had no money in his pocket. But people came from miles around to listen to him. They believed and trusted in his word. They followed him. And they became prosperous. The reason a rich man will never get into the kingdom of heaven because he won't give up anything. For some reason, he thinks all that money he can take with him. Amen. Because like I said, once you die, that money left there and your folks got it, whatever they're going to do with it, that's none of your business. Amen. Come on. you going to have standing up there before God Amen. talking about your business. Your business. Amen. Look at it. That's it. Your business is not here on earth. Amen. We are lost souls trying to get back a kingdom that we threw away with Adam and Eve. But we were blessed and made prosperous and given another chance through the blood of Jesus Christ. Because I tell you, somebody been a whooped on me. I don't think I'd have made it to the cross because they had to kill me right then. I've been like that. But he took it. Never said a word. Never cried out. <coughs> Stumbled all the way up to his death. Laid on the cross. They nailed his hands. Nailed his feet. Then they hung him. Put a crown of thorns on his head. They, I mean, he bleed from everywhere. But all he said was, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Your prosperity and your blessing were certified. But he rose three days. That was it. Go and spread the word, he said. He didn't say go out there and fight my battles. You can't fight the Lord back. I'm sorry. Much as I hate the devil, I can't fight him. But I can make him mad at me by not doing the things he wants me to do. I keep my business between me and God. And when he sticks his nose in it, spreads his back. It's another your business. Always remember one thing. God has you here for a reason. God had Moses go do what he had for a reason. God, Abraham, Noah, Job, Jonah, even David, King David, they were all put where they needed to be for God's great plan. You may or may not be where God wants you to be in his plan. 